Switch in the 100 Night Revival Edition is a PS4 port of a PS3 game. This Revival Edition offers a few new modes, better graphics, and tweaks to the mechanics. I gave it a 2 to 5 stars back when it released on the PS3 on March 25th, 2014. Are these new features and improvements enough to recommend a visit or even a revisit? The simple answer is no, but let's traverse these swampy waters anyway. What didn't work for me in The Witch and the Hunter Knight was the story and art direction. NES has always made strong cases to root for the Anta here in their games. While the main character here, Metalia, has a reason for her malevolence, it's unexplored enough to justify her actions. Her crude attitude isn't the only problem, as there's not a whole lot to like with the rest of the cast either. It's a poor script through and through, but with good voice acting to say the least. As for the art, it's actually better stomach now thanks to the PS4 upgrade. Everything seems brighter and more colorful, though the game does lack in a sense of variety in its dungeons. Compared to the gorgeous 2D art in the dialogue sections, seriously, one of their finest, the models look frumpy comparatively. What once seemed blurry has now been smoothed out, but it's not enough to fully fix the juxtaposition that I've had between uh, Beauty and Beast, as it were. Gameplay was always fun and frantic, but the tweaks in both handling and ease of punishment are welcome changes. The hack and slash combat may be repetitive, but a deep, albeit confusing system mechanics backs it well. The aforementioned new mode comes in the form of a tower dungeon wherein players can control Metalia. It works similarly to the item world in Disgaea, sacrifice a weapon, Metalia invades, get bonuses, etc. There's also a new scenario in this story. Those are fine additions, but nothing game changing. So let's revisit that question posed in the beginning of my impressions here. Is The Witch of the Hundred Knight worth it? Again, I gotta say no. The tweaks and new content are great, but it doesn't change the core issues I had with it originally. This was a great experiment for NIS, but the fun combat and gorgeous 2D art aren't enough to save it from mediocrity. It was a shame in 2014, and it's a shame now. However, as much as I disapprove of this game, I do value a sequel. All is not lost. Boom, 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 boom,